Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. Now we're going to jump right in again to our study that we've been doing last week and this week on pride and humility. And yesterday, before the end of the program, I began sharing with you characteristics of pride, signs of pride, evidences, symptoms of pride, because we must be able to see it. Learn to recognize it because one of the main characteristics about pride is that it blinds you. And so that when you have it, you don't know you have it. When you're in pride, you don't realize or recognize that you are in pride. And so not recognizing it, then you let it go unchecked and then it is deadly. And so you must learn to see it, recognize it when it's there, learn its characteristics, learn its symptoms, its signs and its evidences. And as I said yesterday, that when you begin learning the characteristics of pride, then you're going to start seeing it a lot more in other people also. You will recognize pride and its characteristics in other people. But that's where you have to also be careful because you must ignore it and overlook it in everybody else. But you must deal harshly with it in yourself. You must kill it. And crucify it in yourself. So don't look for pride in other people. You know, so many times we've heard sermons that give a correction or a teaching about something that we need to change about ourselves. And many times we've all done it. We'll be sitting there and say, Oh, My brother needs to hear this. My husband needs to hear this. My wife needs to hear this. And you're thinking about who else needs to hear that message. Oh, I know so-and-so. They really need to hear this. Hey, God is not having you hear this so that somebody else can hear it. God led you to turn on this radio program this morning. Why? Because he know, he knows you are the one who needs it. So don't just be listening to these lessons in these programs and be thinking, oh, my wife needs to hear this. My husband needs to hear this. No, you're the one listening because God knows you're the one that needs it. Yes, you. You deal with you. And that's one of the characteristics of pride Pride is always seeing the faults in other people, but not seeing it in yourself, not recognizing in yourself. So quit thinking about everybody else who needs to hear this teaching. You're the one listening because you're the one that needs it. And God brought you here. God will deal with those other people as he is able to, as he is able to. And it's not necessarily your job to go try to correct them. No, you correct you. And so let me jump in again. Yesterday, we brought up the very first in the list. And these are not really listed in a priority or anything. These are just characteristics, although this is probably one of the very biggest characteristics right here is pride is deceived. Pride believes lies. Pride is deceived. Pride blinds you. Pride deceives you. And so you don't see yourself clearly or accurately. And we looked at two scriptures. First, we saw Obadiah 3. Now, what do you mean 3? Verse 3. You say, but what chapter? Hey, Obadiah has only one chapter, one chapter. So it's chapter one, verse three. The pride of your heart has deceived you. 
the pride of your heart has deceived you. So you see, in the, in, actually in this perspective, you are self-deceived. You're, you are self-deceived when you allow pride. You have pride, pride deceives you, and you're deceived by your own pride. And then we said also pride has an inaccurate view of yourself and your situations. You see yourself wrongly, inaccurately, incorrectly, and your situations. Romans 12.3 says, For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment. Sober. Think of yourself with sober judgment. We would say today, brutally honest. You must be brutally honest about yourself, with yourself, and be open to God showing you the truth about yourself. You know, we've talked in the past about the law of faith. We talked about the law of spiritual authority. We've talked about the creative power of words. These are spiritual laws. And that's the broad spectrum of the teaching of this ministry. This ministry focuses on and emphasizes the kingdom of God and both what is available in the kingdom, the blessings and promises, and number two, how to receive them, the spiritual laws of the kingdom how to receive them through the spiritual laws of the kingdom. And one of the things we have to know and understand and believe at all times is that God does love you. Grace is God has freely given you everything in his kingdom. And if this is new to you, then you need to go back and review the lesson on the kingdom of God I gave seven weeks teaching about the kingdom of God. And somebody said, but how then do you receive? Well, that's the spiritual laws of the kingdom is how you receive everything that's in the kingdom by the spiritual laws. And if you missed that series or any other series that you'd like to hear again or these programs, you can go to my YouTube channel, which is under my name, Cherry Campbell, C-H-E-R-R-I, Campbell, C-A-M-P-B-E-L-L. And there you will see all these radio programs. Well, then my point that I'm getting to is that, no, we talked about God has said he is pleased to give you the kingdom. And he has said, everything that I have is yours. And he said, whatever you ask for in my name, I'll do it. You know, the, there are these many, many all encompassing promises. And yet so many Christians are not receiving them. And yet their first response is usually why God didn't you and notice the finger always gets pointed at God. Why God didn't you do this? Why didn't you give me this? Why didn't you heal my mom? Why didn't you, why didn't you, why didn't you? And that is the blindness. That is the self deception. That is the inaccurate view, the inaccurate view. Anytime you start pointing a finger at God and saying, God, why didn't you? Or why did you let this bad thing happen? If you're pointing the finger at God, you are totally deceived. 
you have an inaccurate view. And what is the root of the inaccurate view? What is the cause? Pride. As I'm going to, let me go ahead and jump into it. Pride always passes the blame. Pride blame shifts. Pride blame shifts. Pride blames something else or someone else for what's bad, what's wrong. And if you are always passing the blame in this, you see, we said you have to think of yourself with sober judgment. Be brutally honest. Because pride has an inaccurate view. Pride wants to blame everything else, everybody else, including God. It's God's fault. It's my husband's fault. It's my wife's fault. It's my company's fault. It's everybody else's fault. That's pride. Pride blame shifts. Pride blames shifts. Pride blames other people, other things. And we see that blaming. It began even in the Garden of Eden with the first sin of Adam and Eve. The first sin we already looked at the very first sin of the human race. Mankind was because of pride. They were acting independently of God. They were believing the lies of the Satan of Satan. They were denying what God said and they were succumbing to the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. And they were rising up against God and what God had said to them. It was the first sin was caused by pride. And then what was their first response after they sinned? Well, we see they covered themselves with fig leaves, self-dependence. Instead of going to God and falling before God and saying, God help, they started with their self-dependence and independence. Well, then what was the next thing that happened after they sinned? God confronted them with their sin and said, did you eat? God asked Adam, did you eat? The fruit that I told you not to eat. What was Adam's answer? Did he say, yes, I did it. No, he did not. He blamed. When God confronted Adam and said, did you eat the fruit that I told you not to eat? Let's look at. Genesis chapter three. Now this is after they have, they have clothed themselves. They're acting independent and self-dependent. Now God confronts them and says, did you eat the fruit? And in Genesis three, 12, the man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree And I ate it. You know, that's one of the problems in marriages when there is a problem. When there's a problem, the pride is usually the problem. And it's usually blame shifting the other person, blaming the other person. The husband blames the wife and the wife blames the husband. Humility takes the blame. Humility acknowledges your own faults and weaknesses. Pride denies your fault and passes the blame to somebody else. So the man said to the woman in verse 12, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. So then God talks to the woman. Verse 13. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So she also passed the blame. She passed the blame down to the serpent. She said the serpent deceived me. It was because of him. It was his fault. 
I heard a preacher say this one time. The man blamed the woman. The woman blamed the serpent. And the serpent didn't have a leg to stand on. (laughs) I thought that was pretty cute. The serpent didn't have a leg to stand on. Yeah, he ended up with the blame. And rightly so. It was his fault. But it was not totally his fault. Because Adam could have humbled himself. Eve could have humbled herself. They both could have resisted the temptation, resisted the lie, resisted the de- the deception. They both could have made themselves dependent upon God. And when God confronted them, they could have said, yes, I did it. I'm at fault. I'm wrong. They neither one accepted their own fault, but they passed the blame. They put past the blame. And so we see here that pride past the blame and pride will even go so far as blaming God. Notice here that the man said, the woman you gave me. The woman you gave me. So he blamed the woman, but he was also blaming God. You gave her to me. It's your fault. If you had never given me this woman, I would not have eaten. It's your fault, God, that I did that. You gave me that woman. And he passed the blame even to God. And you know, there's a lot of Christians today. Most Christians still blame God for the bad things that happen. And oh, that is wrong. Never, 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 ever, ever, ever blame God for anything wrong or anything bad because God is only good and he only does good. Everything good is from him. And you can read that again and again. Psalm 119. I I think maybe v- verse 168 or something like that says, Lord, you are good and what you do is good. And in James chapter one, uh, verse 17, every good and perfect gift comes down from the, the father. That's a partial quote. James 1.17, every good and perfect gift comes from the Father. God only gives good. He only gives good gifts to his children. Nothing bad comes from God. Where does the bad come from? The bad comes from the curse of sin and death. The law of sin and death. The law of sin and death is the producer of everything bad. And we can, we can receive the good through faith and through the laws of the spirit that we've taught. But you can also receive the bad through not activating faith, not activating the laws of the spirit, failing to be persistent or diligent or to keep your guard, failing to walk in love, being merciful and uncritical of others. I mean, there are so many things that we do that open the door in our own lives that give the devil access. We open the door. You open the door and it's never, 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 ever, ever, ever God's fault. You have to learn how to close those doors in your life, slam them shut on the devil so he doesn't get access. And that's what we're talking about in the laws of the spirit, the laws of the kingdom of God, the spiritual laws. One of them is love, and you need to study a lot about love. Yeah, you've heard about it, but not enough. And we'll get to that in a later subject. But 
Right now, let me get to the pep, back to the point, passing the blame. Don't pass the blame to God. Don't blame your husband. Don't blame your wife. Don't blame your company. Don't blame your parents. You say, well, it's because my parents were like this. My parents did this or they didn't do this. Don't blame your parents. Don't blame your economic status. Don't blame the color of your skin. Don't blame your education level. Don't blame anything. Be brutally honest with yourself. You are in control of you. There's the law of spiritual authority. You have 100% control over you. Nobody else does. You have 100% control over you. So you have what you've allowed yourself to have. You are what you've allowed yourself to be. You are what you are because you've allowed it. Not God. Not because of your parents. Not because of where you grew up. Not because you've had bad luck. You are what you are because you have allowed it. Pride passes the blame and will never acknowledge its own fault. You have to acknowledge you are the reason you are in the situation you're in. You have the law of spiritual authority shows that you have 100% authority over you. 100%. You are what you are because you've allowed it. You have what you have because you've allowed it. You could have made many different choices in life that would have put you in a totally different place from where you are today. You could have made hundreds, if not thousands of different choices in your lifetime that would have put you in a different place from where you are today. Now that could have been good or bad. If you're in a good place, you have made good choices. If you are in a bad place, it's because you made bad choices. You made bad choices. You made bad choices. You need to ask God to forgive you. This is humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God. And then what happens? You get grace, grace, grace to the humble. But how do you get grace? Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Then you'll get grace. Then you'll get the help you need. Then you can get out of your situation. So you simply have to acknowledge your own fault. And not blame anybody else. Don't say, God, it's because of my wife or my husband, my parents or anything else. You say, God, I acknowledge my own fault. I acknowledge I have made bad choices. I have, I acknowledge that I have not thought right. I've had an inaccurate view of myself and my situations. I acknowledge that I don't know enough. I acknowledge that I did not hear your voice and follow and obey you the way I should have. I acknowledge that I haven't walked in love perfectly and I've given the devil access to my life to bring in problems. I acknowledge my own fault, my own shortcomings, and I ask you for grace and help. Do you realize by saying that simple prayer, you can release a flood of God's power on your behalf? Yes. Do you realize that that simple prayer of humility is the key to a flood of grace being released on your behalf? You can immediately be getting God's grace, God's help, God's deliverance, God's power, God's answers, God's wisdom, God's blessing in your life by that simple prayer of humility. I acknowledge my own fault. I did it. I'm wrong. I messed up. God, forgive me. Boom. You get grace. That is the brings the release of grace. Grace is the help of God that you need in your situation of all kinds, all kinds of help. It can be financial help. It can be wisdom and answers and counsel. It can be people supporting. It can be any kind of help that you need, physical, material, emotional, 
Any help you need is released in grace to you when you simply humble yourself before God. Humble yourself before the Lord and he will give you abundant grace, abundant grace to help you to get out of your situation. So don't be proud. Don't harden your heart. Don't pass the blame and blame shift everything else and including blaming God for your problem. No, acknowledge you are to blame. You take the blame. You acknowledge your fault and then you get grace to help in your time of need and it will get you out of your situation. God will begin moving in your life, in your behalf to help you. He'll begin giving you answers and wisdom and direction and counsel. He'll begin giving you the financial assistance you need. He'll begin bringing people into your life to help you get out of the situation you're in. Grace will be released to you when you humble yourself under the mighty hand of of God. Well, that's the big lesson for today. God wouldn't let me get on to the next point. That's it. Take it, receive it, receive God's grace to you today and give him all glory for the good things in your life. And join me again tomorrow. And remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.